Hi, this is Shane Smythe from Marketing Cloud Mojo. Today we're gonna to be talking about filter data extensions. We're gonna be talking about basic data extensions for filtering, we're gonna be talking about automating data extensions and filtering, and we're gonna be talking about data relationships at the very end. All right, let's dive right in. So to orient yourself, we're in Marketing Cloud right now on the overview screen. This is a very common place you start. Um, we're gonna start this demo by going into subscribers and data extensions. This is where we're gonna find filters. So today's topic is all about filters, how we do filters, the different options inside of Marketing Cloud, and going a little bit into more of the advanced type of filtering that we have the ability to do. So you'll see that we have a couple of standard data extensions already in here, this cloud page data extension. We have a couple other data extensions that are specific to our account. To kind of give a quick overview, data extensions are a grouping of individuals uh, with custom fields about them and attributes about those individuals. So in our case, we have all contacts with a record count of a whopping six people. So we'll dive into this data extension and we'll see that we have these individual attributes about this, uh, these people. And if we go into records, we can see a little bit about who they are and, and maybe even where they live and how much data we have on the individuals. Uh, let's say that we wanna to send to an audience specific to Minnesota and we wanna send them a you know, sweepstakes or, or something of that uh, sort. And we wanna only do that for people in Minnesota. This list or this data extension right here is not gonna do for us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into filtering. You have the option to click this filter button on the top right hand side, or you can do that from the main menu. So we're gonna click filter. And from here on the left hand side, you see those same fields that we just talked about. We're gonna drag over state in this case, and we have the option to drop down and make a decision on how we wanna filter these individuals. In this case, we know what the values are. We just saw them. Uh, so we can do is equals to in and this will capture all the people with the state of Minnesota. We also have the option to bring in other people. Uh, maybe we want to be super sure that it was only people in Minnesota or MN US. We could also bring over the country and also do US or maybe in this case we want to do contains because some of our data has US and some of it has USA. Uh, maybe we don't have a super good process for uh, keeping that data consistent. Um, you'll notice that once you put two items on here, you have this little toggle on the right hand side. This lets you change from and to or. So to kind of read this in English, we are saying mailing state is equal to Minnesota and the mailing country is US. Uh, we could also change this to or, and we could say the state is Minnesota or they're in US. We don't want to do that in this case. We want to have people only in Minnesota. So we're going to keep it. Uh, we're going to take this one off. We're going to keep it just as this individual one right here. So at this point, we can save and build. This will create a one-time data extension. So I'm going to call this uh, Minnesota Contacts. And I'm going to save this. So that you'll see once we pop out to the main screen, we pop back into this data extension, that we now have three records in here. So going to the records, we see that we have Jack, Andy, and Justin in here. And these three are the individuals we wanna to send to. So this is the most basic type of filtering inside of Marketing Cloud. This filter is a one-time filter and will never refresh unless you tell it to refresh. So on the right-hand corner, we see this little circle button right here, this little two arrows pointing together, this is a refresh button. So at some point in time we wanted to manually refresh this, we could, and we could click that button and it would do it, and it would, depending on the data size, take a couple of seconds or minutes, and then we'd have our refresh data. Uh, this is great for one-time sends and daily sends, but in some cases we want to do something more automated. And so in that case, what you would do is you would do a filter definition. If you go into your subscriber table up here, you have data filters, and this is where we're gonna start this new automated process. So we're gonna click data filters. A blank screen right here, we're gonna click create on the top right hand corner. We're gonna base this off a data extension. We're gonna base this off our main all contacts data extension. From here, same filter that we did before, state is equal to Minnesota. We'll save this. We'll call this Minnesota Contacts 2 Data Filter. 
This is now the logic of our data extension. This is not the actual data extension itself, this is the logic behind it. So once we have this created, we can either create the definition right from here, but since we wanna automate this, we want to leave the email studio portion of Marketing Cloud and we wanna go over to Automation Studio. Inside of Automation Studio, we're gonna click Activities and we're gonna click Create Activity and we're gonna click Filter. And here, we're gonna call this Minnesota Contacts 2 Filter, if you can spell, Filter, and then we're gonna select what data filter we have in our list. Right now, we only have one. We'll select this, and we'll go Next, and then we're gonna name the data extension, so the output of the filter. So the data filter is the logic, the filter is the mechanism at which we're able to automate and create a data extension. So we're gonna call this Minnesota Contacts 2 and click Next and Finish. And we'll go down to Filter down here and we have this new filter. So right now, we don't have a data extension. We still only have a data filter and now we have a filter. So what we can do is we can go back to Overview and we're gonna click a new automation this automation is going to is going to be what actually automates that process for us. So we'll see this filter activity right here. We're going to drag this over and we're going to choose this new filter activity. Click done. We're going to drag over a schedule here. We're going to give it a name, call it Minnesota Contacts. Click done. Save. Now we have an automation. At this point we can configure the schedule to automate whenever we want to. We're not gonna go in this right now, we'll go into it later, but we'll click run once right now. We'll let this run once. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna create that data extension, it's gonna populate with the information that we need to, and then now we have an automated source. So we can automate this hourly, daily, or weekly to update the information in our Minnesota contacts. So now we've kind of talked about the two different mechanisms at which we can filter. We can do normal filters, one-off filters, and we can do the automated filters that are ongoing and kind of kept consistent. We see um, use cases for both, so it really depends on what you're trying to do. So let's go back to our email studio to check to see if that data extension has been created yet. So we'll see that the data extension has been created, but it's still processing. So it's now at zero, but in a minute, it'll probably jump up to three here. So let's just spam this left-hand side here. So we have three now, awesome. So that's the same people that we had looked at earlier. Jack, Andy, and Justin, perfect. So last thing I wanna to touch on real quick is data relationships. This is key with filters. This is getting a little more into the advanced topics here, but let's say for instance, we have our all contacts and we have this order data extension and we want the ability to filter on the individuals who have ordered after a specific date. On the surface, that doesn't seem like it would be too complicated, but if we go into this all contacts data extension, we actually don't have any columns to filter on for that filter criteria for order. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to create a data relationship. This data relationship is fairly straightforward. I like to name them something easily to read. So I always do my first data extension to my own second data extension. So all contacts to orders. We're going to select our first data extension on the left-hand side here, all contacts. And we're gonna select our right data extension, orders over here. And it's actually gonna pre-populate for us, but you have the ability to click in here and change the matching field. So this is when we get into relationships. So we're looking for the common field between the two. Orders has a couple different data extension, or a couple different fields here. We have order ID, a subscriber key, total quantity, um, but subscriber key is what links the two of them together. So because these two match, it auto checked this data filter for us. And once we click save, we now have a new data relationship. So let's go back up to our, our top data extension here. Let's go back into all contacts and let's go to filter again. So now once we're in this filter area, once more, we can see that we have a new item down here called data relationships. So if we open that up, 
we're actually gonna see that name that I just created for data relationships. And if we open it up, we're gonna see those fields on the order table itself. So now we could pull over order date is after, let's say that it's after you know, February 1st. So what this is gonna do is it's going to go to their all contacts and those six individuals, and it's gonna go and say, okay, out of these six individuals, how many people have records in the orders data extension that have a order date after the first? So let's try this, let's save and build. So we're gonna do uh, all contacts after, let's say four, one. I think I did February, so two. Okay, perfect. We're gonna save this. We're gonna give this a second. Okay, so let's pop back in here. All right, cool. So it looks like it captured three individuals. So different people at this time. So we have also Andy and Justin, but we have Pat this time. So we can see that if we go into orders, we have four records. And there are different timing on here too. So these all matched up correctly as we wanted to. So I hope that helps you with filtering. Uh, post any questions, um, share this, subscribe. Uh, we appreciate you guys watching. Thanks.